Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope everybody's doing well. I know that I am. And in this walkthrough, we're going to go over all the NPC side quests and try to grab every item we possibly can. So with that being said, let's go ahead and go into our system settings. I want to show everybody that I did change out my button layout for my jump and examine. So what I did is instead of examining with triangle, I went ahead and toggled that to jump. So now I jump with triangle. And then when I want to examine things or, um, you know, switch my weapon to two hand, I use the X button. So I just flip flop those. So whenever I'm going over anything like how to do something, just know that those two are going to be flip flopped. You don't have to do the same thing as me. It's just how I feel comfortable playing the game. All right, now that that's all been said, let's go ahead and start a new game. We have a choice of different classes here. We have the Vagabond, Warrior, Hero, Bandit, Astrologer, Prophet, Samurai, Prisoner, Confessor, and the Wretch. You can choose any class you want to start out with. I'm going to choose the Vagabond, and the reason why is because it's an easier class to learn for anybody that's new to the game. Let's go ahead and choose the Vagabond. You'll get two choices, type A, type B. Type A is a male body and type B is a female body. We're gonna go ahead and choose type A. We're gonna enter our name. That is gonna be Mr. John Wayne, naturally. Oh, I spaced that too much, I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. I don't know how to spell my name. And then we're gonna choose a keepsake as well. You can choose not to pick any keepsake, but I wouldn't recommend it because this is just a free starting item. You can choose the Crimson Amber Medallion, which will give you more health when you equip it. We're not going to use that because we can find one fairly early. We can choose the Lands Between Ruin, which will give you more runes when you use it. The Golden Seed, which will give you an extra Sacred Flask when you um, use that as well. Fanged Imped Ashes, we can summon those when we get our Summoning Bell. Cracked Pot, which we can use to make um, different throwing items and whatnot, like uh, fire bombs and etc. Stone Sword Key will allow you to open up uh, different barriers that are blocking your path. We are going to use the Stone Sword Key. A lot of people like to go for the Golden Seed, but you get quite a few Golden Seeds in the game, and you're not going to really need to need them at the beginning of the game. Everything that you're going to do at the beginning of the game is going to be fairly easy. So it's just not worth it. All right. So the stone sword key, we talked about that. The bewitching branch. This is a unique consumable. You can hit an enemy with it and they'll start attacking other enemies. Kind of a niche item, but it can be useful in certain situations. We have boiled prawn, which will boost your physical damage. So you won't take as much uh, physical damage and then the shrubberies woe which will attract enemies to you let's go ahead and pick the stone sword key and then we're going to go to our detailed uh, appearance we already have one saved so i'm going to choose him and then we're going to finish up and i'll see everybody after the cutscene. Fallen leaves tell a story. The great 
Elden Ring was shattered. In our home, across the fog, the lands between. Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. Horalu, chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask, fear the deathbed companion. The loathsome dung eater. And Sir Gideon Othmir. The all knowing. And one other whom grace would again bless. A tarnished of no renown. Cross the fog to the lands between. To stand before the Elden Ring. And become the Elden Lord. All right. Welcome to the chapel of anticipation. So I have the ring emote that's for pre-ordering the game. So if you don't have that, I apologize. Right here, you can pillage these remains. We'll get the tarnished wizen finger. That will allow us to write messages on the ground and people can read them and rate them, whether they're good or poor. Some people like to troll others into killing themselves. Um, and some like to be helpful. So it's totally up to you. Right here, this is kind of showing that you can put a message down. This is a developer message. And it reads, Though the path broken and uncertain, claim your place as Elden Lord. Let's go ahead and go through these doors. So real quick, if we look across the way, 
we can see the first legacy dungeon. We'll be going there a little later into the walkthrough, but for now, let's focus on the basics. So when we roll, we notice that we're rolling really slow. This is called a fat roll, and this will give us less invulnerability frames or iframes. A lot of people like to call them iframes, but they're um, invulnerability frames. And how we get rid of that is we go into equipment. The tutorial is going to pop up. And because we're carrying the Hellbred, if you look on the far right bottom corner of the character statuses, you can see that it says heavy load. So if we take the Hellbred off, we'll be at a medium low load. Not a medium low. Uh, a medium load, and we can roll a lot faster. So we'll get more iframes, and what iframes will help is you not getting hit when you roll. Real quick, before we go in here, I'm just going to say we are going to die to this boss. I'm not going to try to fight him. I'm just going to die to him. And the reason why is if you beat him, you do get a really good sword, but he is very difficult to beat. And it's kind of not worth it because we'll end up coming back here later on into the game. So for now, let's go ahead and die to this boss. And then I'll see everybody at the uh, after the cutscene. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. even if it does violate the Golden Order. Alright, so we have the Flask of Crimson Tears that will refill our health whenever we lose health. And we also get the Flask of Cerulean Tears, which will refill our FP or focus points after using them as well. Or, well, using focus points, yeah. Um, usually for magic users, we're not going to be using any magic, so we won't be using the... Flask of Cerulean Tears anytime soon. Right here is the Cave of Knowledge. This is Tutorial Cave. What I like to do is drop off right here. And then right here. 
and we can see our first grace. Our first sight of grace. We're going to light it and then sit at it. And the reason why we want to sit at the sight of grace is to go into our flasks and reallocate them. So if you're using a sorcerer type class, do keep a flask or two of your Cerulean Tears, but we're not. So what we're gonna do is put it over to our Crimson Tears. So we have one extra Cerulean Tear, or not Cerulean Tear, uh, Crimson Tear to refill our health. Let's go into Equipment. Down here are our Quick Slots. If we go and press down on the D-pad, we can switch between what we want to use on our quick slots. We don't need the Cerulean flask on here because we're not going to use it. And it's empty. There's no charges in it. So it's just taking up space. So you can press square to unequip that. Right here is our first enemy of the game. Besides that boss that killed us, obviously. You can hit R3 to lock on. You can toggle lock on back and forth from R3. And then you can use R1 for a quick or light attack. And then lock on again. And we can use R2 for a slow but heavy attack. So you're going to do more damage with R2, less damage with R1, but one slower than the other. Right here, if we hold up our shield, an enemy will hit it and bounce off. Let's go ahead and just kill him. You can use circle to dodge roll. So depending on which way you want to dodge out of the way, you can even dodge forward if you like. Or you can backstep. If you want to backstep, you just hit circle. You don't press any direction. And you can actually backstep, hit R1, and you'll do a lunge forward. So you'll get special attacks as you hit circle. And then R2. Different attacks. Triangle to jump. Up top, we can see a knight with a crossbow shooting bolts at us. We'll get to him a little later. Right here we can pick up some material to craft with. This is Roa Fruit. We don't have a crafting kit, so we can't craft anything just yet. But we will shortly. Right here, if you hold X and hit R1 or L1, will determine on what you're going to two-hand. So if you hit R1, you're going to two-hand your sword. If you hit L2 while holding X, you're going to two-hand your shield. So let's go ahead and two-hand our sword. And then we're going to hold R2 and then hold R2 again. And we'll get a repost on this stunned enemy. So you'll do a, a heavier attack if you hold R2 and then attack. And you can keep doing that right after an attack as long as you have the stamina to do it. Right here's another enemy. You can switch targets by using the right joystick to switch between them. You can also get a backstab on enemies by getting behind them. And then if you hit R2 after blocking, you'll get a special attack as well. I'll show it off better on this guy right here that's shooting bolts at us. So he's going to hit us. Hit R2. Then R1 for the repost. You can also parry with L2. But I find in Elden Ring, it's very difficult to parry. The timing is like you have to be to the millisecond to be able to parry. Like... 
I'll try to parry this guy right here. I probably won't successfully do it. It's just so difficult. And I'm not bad at parrying in Dark Souls. It just, it seems like Elden Ring is a whole different parry system. Like it, it's very difficult. The timing is just so crazy. So that, that was my attempt at parrying and I did not succeed, unfortunately. Right here, we can use L3 to crouch and you can sneak up behind an enemy and get a backstab for a critical hit. Anytime that you repost an enemy, backstab an enemy, you're going to get a critical hit, which is going to give you extra damage. I already talked about the charged R2 attacks. There's also a second um, attack you can use. Well, actually, there's more than two, but there's multiple attacks to get people to be stunned or enemies to be stunned. And one of them is jumping and hitting R2 on top of the enemy. It'll break their stance and you'll be able to get a repost. Right here is our first stake of Marika. And this right here will give us a second option when we die. So when we die, we have two places we can respawn. Back at the Grace or over at a stake of Marika. How you know there's a stake of Marika around is at the bottom of the green stamina bar, you'll see a statue with its eye or with its eyes, with its arms kind of spread apart. That'll let you know, like, that is a stake of Marika, and you'll be able to respawn back at that. All right, now that that's been said, let's go ahead and go through the fog wall here. And we're going to fight this soldier of Godric. We're going to hold R1, or L1, not R1, L1 to block. And then R2. Get the repost and he's dead over here we can see an item this is going to give us the strength emote be careful where you're dropping you don't want to drop back down into that hole so kind of drop right over here that hole is where we drop down to learn all the basic controls. I want to apologize to um, anybody that feels like the video is going long. I just want to go over a lot of the basics and stuff for anybody that's brand new to the game and has never played like a Souls-like game. Before we light this, uh, well, we can light the Site of Lost Grace here. Right here, we can put a stone sword key in. Don't do it because we can put it into a area that's going to be a little bit better um, and, and useful. Right now, we're going to leave this. This is a harder area. We will come back and do that. But for now, we're just going to move on. Right here, we can get the finger severer. And what that'll do is allow us to leave other people's worlds that were helping, like maybe they went AFK or they're just um, being annoying or something, whatever. You can leave their world using the finger sever. And then right here is the tarnished furled finger. That will allow you to put your sign down in different spots of the world wherever you want and hopefully be summoned in by somebody. Let's go up this elevator. All right, we're going to open up this door and take our first steps into Limgrave. Absolutely beautiful. See the Erd tree there? 
massive. If you look off into the distance, you can see a knight on a horse patrolling. Do not go near him. He will kill you, I promise. And then we see an NPC off in the distance as well. We're going to talk to him in just a moment. For now, let's pick up some Roa fruit. We'll use that to craft things a little later. And then right here, if we grab this item, this is going to give us the small golden effigy. And we can use that to put our sign down in front of these crucified, um, I guess, dead guys, dead beings. You see them all over uh, Limgrave. They're you, beings that are crucified. If you examine it, you can activate it. So that when you use your small golden effigy, your sign will go down in front of it and somebody can summon you in. You'll find those statues all over the world, not just in Limgrave. And you can choose to either put your sign down in the area that's nearby or all across the lands between. Let's go ahead and light this site of grace, the site of lost grace. Right here is going to show us that there, this little beam of light will guide our way to where we need to go next. For now, we're going to talk to Vare. So let's talk to Vare. I think it's Vare, not Vare. Oh, yes. Tarnished, are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless, me, Vare. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace, the golden light that gives life to you tarnished? You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, the path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward, most certainly, to Castle Stormvale, over on the cliff, the home of the decrepit demigod, Godric the Grafted. It's time you set off, I should think, to Castle Stormvale on the cliff, where Grace would guide you. If you seek the Elden Ring, maidenless as you are, Okay, that's all Vare or Vare, whatever his name is, is going to say to us. We're going to hop down. Just be careful not to hop too close to that knight. We want to kill these goat creatures. Reason why is they're going to give us thin beast bones. And we can use those to craft, or to craft some throwing knives. You can see the knight over there. We're just going to run off this way. There's another goat. So it takes thin or two thin beast bones to make, I believe, five um, bone knives. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Go ahead and grab another Sight of Grace.
This is just talking about fast travel for us, which we will fast travel a little later. Right there's Carle, or Kale. First we want to come over here to the smithing table and we can pick up ourselves a smithing stone. We can also upgrade our weapon here. We're not going to upgrade this sword that we're using right now. We're actually going to get a different sword and upgrade that and use that for a good majority of the game, if not the whole game. Let's go ahead and talk to Kale. You're a tarnished. I can see it. And I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Kale, purveyor of fine goods. I am of a nomadic people, selling wares as I travel. The land has been tainted by madness since the shattering of the Elden Ring. It's only tarnished like yourself, who keep things from drying up entirely. Let's say you're a very welcome customer. You know, if you can spare the runes, you should buy yourself a crafting kit. A crafting kit allows you to make basic items on your own. Essential, really, if you intend to survive out here for any duration. The kit costs a bundle, and I admit I do take my cut. But the important thing is that you survive. Every customer counts. After all. Let's go to purchase. We're going to come over to the crafting kit. We're going to buy that. And we're also going to buy ourselves a torch. You don't have to buy the torch. I'm going to buy it because I know that it's going to get really dark in certain areas. And I can navigate them without a torch. But for the sake of everybody watching the video... I'm going to use that torch to help everyone see. We can also buy cracked pot. Well, cracked pots. Um, we're going to come back and get those. Those are actually very useful. And we're also going to come back to get the missionaries cookbook one and the nomadic warriors cookbook one and two. And maybe a few other um, things we'll pick up as well. But we'll see the for calling finger remedy before we go will allow you to co-op with other people. So if you use the For Calling Finger Remedy, you can see other people's signs and summon them into your world. And the telescope is, well, a telescope. It lets you see things from far away. <laughs> so pretty basic stuff. Let's go ahead and leave. I'm glad you took my warning to heart. You've made an excellent choice. Right here is just going to tell us about item crafting and that we can craft containers like fire bombs and whatnot. Right here is a break in the wall. We're going to continue on. And if you ever see these herd leaf flowers, pick them up. That'll let you craft um, the for calling finger remedies. Real quick. Oh, I missed them. Oh well, so we missed him, but if you ever see a glowing skull, hit it. You'll be able to get a golden rune one, and that will give you 200 runes every time you use them. Pick up another early flower. Then we're gonna fight this guy over here. We can actually hold our shield out. We're gonna do this. This will be a lot easier to kill the enemies instead of just hitting R1. I mean, obviously you can choose to kill an enemy any way you want. Right here, gold tinged excre excrement. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Cannot talk, I'll tell you what. Grab some more early flowers. If we crouch, we can take out this enemy. There's an enemy over there patrolling. We're not going to bother with them because we're going to be going over there anyways uh, later on into the walkthrough. 
Right here we have an enemy kind of looking out. A little lookout or guy that's trying to see. I don't know if somebody's in the bush. That bush was totally in his way. Always be picking up material, by the way. You never know what you're going to want to craft or what's going to be useful. Right here is a stake of Marika. So if we die by accidentally going over there, we can respawn right here and then go grab our runes and then run away. We're not going to go through that encampment. We're actually going to go around it. And I'm going to light a grace first. And then only go in just a little bit, just to a, a pillar over there to grab the map and grab the sword that we're going to be using um, here for the majority of the walkthrough, if not the whole walkthrough. So what we want to do is crouch and you can hold circle to uh, actually walk faster while you're crouched. Backstab on him for a critical hit. Jump up here. Open this up. And we'll be able to pick ourselves up the Lord Sworn's Greatsword. Pretty decent weapon to start the game off with um, for anybody that's playing as a strength build or a um, quality build. also see a skull over there that I want to get. So I'm going to wait for this guy... That has a horn in his hand and if you alert him or get his attention what he's gonna do is blow the horn and alert the whole encampment and you're gonna have to fight everybody and that is no fun no fun at all he's gonna run at us that's okay. We'll take him out real quick. Just be careful not to get the attention of that knight with the spear and shield. He's pretty tough. We're going to pick up the map Limgrave West. Also be careful there is a knight patrolling over here as well. And the little back piece. We can actually stand up. We're going to go back to this grace. We're going to sit at it. And there's going to be a cutscene. We're actually going to meet the finger maiden. That's going to allow us to level up. Greetings, traveler from beyond the fog. I am Melina. I offer you an accord. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are Maidenless. I can play the role of Maiden, turning runes into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree. Then it's settled. Summon me by grace to turn runes into strength. 
Ah, another matter. I bequeath to you this ring. Use it to traverse great distances. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. Okay, so she gave us a lot of dialogue all at once. Um, this is how we're going to be able to level up. She's not always going to be at the site of grace to level us up, but we'll still be able to level up here. Shall I turn your runes to strength? Let my hand rest upon you. For but a moment, share them with me. Your thoughts, your ambitions, the principles you would follow. Sorry about that. I did not mean to press X right there and uh, tr try to talk over Melina. So right here, we're going to be able to level up. We do not have enough ruins to be able to level up yet, but we will shortly. Here in the uh, next video, after we go through our first dungeon, we're actually going to level up and be able to use that Lord Sworn's great sword that we just got. So for now, we're just going to exit out of here. Um, and finish up with Melina. So she'll disappear and we can um, get a little bit of um, a tutorial about horseback riding and then also with our quick pouches. I've already talked about the quick uh, pouch and stuff like that. And we'll go over that more as we get different items. For now, let's go ahead and press the middle pad to open up our map. And if we go down, we're going to fast travel over to the Church of Ella. So I'll see everybody over there and uh, we'll be getting our summons. This way tarnished. May I have a word? A pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the witch, Rena. I'd heard tell of a Tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. And upon looking into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. Thou art possessed of the power, no? To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. Ah, as I had hoped, I was entrusted this for thee by Torrent's former master. Tis a bell for calling forth spirits. Summon them with it. From ash and return to the earth tree, the spirits will obey thine command but briefly. As they recall battles past, now it is thine to do with as thou wishest. Forgive mine intrusion, Tarnished. I doubt we shall again meet. But all the same, learn well the lands between. How long will it be, I wonder, before the Tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers? So that was Rinna, a.k.a. Rani. Real quick before we end the video, let's go ahead and talk about our pouches over here. So we have our gestures down on the bottom right side, but we also have four pouches that have our D-pad kind of on it. What we can do is press triangle to switch. I don't ever use the memory of grace. I don't find a use for it at all. It just is not something that I'll ever use. So what I end up doing is I usually switch it out with this spectral steed whistle, which will allow us to summon in torrent to be able to ride. And then over here on the left one or on the bottom one, just below the spectral uh, steed whistle 
for our left D-pad, I'll put on our small golden effigy. Just like that. We'll get out of this. Or, nope. We'll go into equipment real quick. And what we'll do is we'll equip the lone wolf ashes. Okay. And one last thing, item crafting. And this will be the last thing that we'll talk about. So we only have two thin beast bones. So we can only make five bone darts. Now I'll probably, after this video, go and kill some of those goats and get a little more. So that we have a few extra bone darts to use whenever we go into our first dungeon. Right here we can make two for calling remedies. Let's go ahead and do that now. You need two earth leaf flowers to make one um, for calling finger remedy. And this is going to talk about being summoned into other people's worlds and um, how to summon people and how to put your sign down. If we go back into our equipment, let's switch this out. We're going to put the darts here and then we're going to put the lone wolf ashes here. And we'll talk a little more about that in the next video. But for now, I want to tell everybody, thank you so very much for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world, Mr. John Wayne, signing off.